Hey guys, welcome back to Posh Cockney TV. Thanks for joining me again. We have got another show on the Posh Cockney podcast coming to you today. We're going to be interviewing Ronit Copeland and she's based in Israel. So it's going to be a fascinating show and I hope you all enjoy it. Let's talk about the week we just had. So Super Saturday last week and uh, some big announcements in hospitality this week. 5% BAT for hospitality in the next six months, 50% off for Monday to Wednesday throughout August for many, many restaurants. It's big news. Hopefully, hopefully it helps. And um, what about gyms opening on the 25th? Can't wait for that one. Guys, enjoy the show. We're going to get into it. Let's speak to Ronit. Ronit, how are you? Welcome to Posh Cotney TV and the Posh Cotney podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Liam. It's a pleasure. How have you been? Well, I've been okay on a personal level. Of course, we're here safe and healthy, our family, pretty much uh, most of the time at home, yeah. uh, working from home remotely. But I was used to remote because I, I, I travel a lot before the COVID. Hopefully soon there'll be international travel. But uh, we're doing okay um, and uh, waiting for a vaccine. Maybe you can tell us when there will be a vaccine coming up soon. Well, n all my contacts are telling me it's not for uh, n not very soon. For a while. But you know, we we have to just try and adapt really and 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 get used to this new. And live with it. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are you right now? So I'm at home. Uh, we live in a wonderful, I would say, town suburb in between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much in the country, a little bit you know, in the country. So it's nice because my office is in Rothschild in Tel Aviv, right at the center of things. So I travel to Tel Aviv a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, working, you know, that balance between meetings, we do have, you know, I do have face-to-face -face -face meetings, slowly but surely, but working a lot online at home. And I have, and, and what I did, we, we set up a basement, the whole typical office, home office setup. So we're all set and very comfortable and doing a lot of work. It's, it's incredible and actually pretty surprising how much you can get done, right? Also, you know, a little bit uh, with that distance and yeah. uh, not being able to travel. So that's where I am right now, uh, between Tel Aviv and Mevaseret, a wonderful town. Yeah. I've never been, but uh, when we spoke before, I must come and visit you there. It sounds amazing. Tell us a little bit about your, uh, your company. So, uh, Copeland Hospitality, yeah? Yeah, my company is celebrating this year 10th year anniversary. So the big parties and the big, you know, celebrations will come eventually. But it's, uh, I would call it like a second, a second stage, a second big stage in my career. The first stage I was um, uh, in the corporate world, in that big organizations with a lot of boxes and lines and, and a lot of, um, uh, you know, meetings and board meetings. I was a vice president of marketing at Sheridan, Hilton, Hyatt, and Marriott, mostly in Israel, but a little bit also in Europe because there were times where we used to have regional uh, positions. Today, it's a little bit less, but one, we, we used to have like all kinds of uh, Italy, Turkey, Greece, whoever is the neighboring company, the neighboring country. So as, as a vice president marketing, it, we definitely traveled a lot and had a you know developed a huge network and had to, was able to incredible opportunities of renovations and openings and reopenings and rebrandings and you can imagine you know from opening a restaurant opening a spa everything that had to do with uh, also the, the marketing when we were all going to the internet so we're talking about the 2000s and 2010 big a big year for me, um, I decided to open my own shop, my own boutique firm that specializes on opening and developing hotel projects. I work with hotel owners, asset managers, hotel management, all kinds of real estate companies, uh, funds that want part of their real estate is, is, is having a hotel asset, a hotel property. So I help them get into the industry, go into the great connections, uh, uh, affiliations for international brands if we need so and all of the work that you would have uh, in the life cycle of a hotel whether it's one that is existing and is going through some strategic change or whether it's one that is going slowly through uh, 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 opening process development process and we're able to help them get into the market 
at the right time at the right place with the right target audience. And we come from the from that you know uh, avenue of who is going to fill up the hotel at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And where is the money going to come at the end of the day? And not just the design, which I'm very involved with the design. It's part design for me is everything. It could be, you know, it could be the, the, <laughs> everything that has to do with the interior designs of the furnishings and anything has to do with all the senses of the music and the touch and the feel and the food and uh, what's, what, what's, what's the, what the employees wearing, yeah. the smile at the front desk. So in that sense, we're very involved when we're building a concept on the design, but at the same time, very involved with the numbers. So I think what Copeland Hospitality does, it connects all the dots from the numbers all the way to, to the conceptual and the, all the actionable ideas that you have in order to, to actually open successfully a hotel. So you get involved with a lot of things at the same time. It's very, very exciting. And our, our clients are, are fantastic. Would you say you're a bit of a perfectionist, Ronit? Uh, yes, I am. I've always been. Uh, I'm a Virgo <laughs> also. So I am very much um, a control freak, I would say, but in a good way, because I get to do so much. There's such a diversity of what we do and such a variety of services that we offer that we can be um, working on staff, um, getting the staff for an independent hotel, and really choosing the best people that we can choose. And at the same time, we can be um, affiliating a hotel owner to a brand, to you know, one of the biggest brands, could be Hyatt, Hilton, Marriott, and, and then working a little bit differently with them. So you, gotta, you do have to be flexible and adapt. You know, when you're working with an international or global brand, it's different than when you're working with an independent. Most of uh, our work is with boutique and lifestyle products. And we were able, thankfully, to really change uh, Tel Aviv altogether from, ev from the, in the hotel industry. And we created these neighborhoods that have at least one or two boutique hotels. And we, we pretty much uh, changed that idea or perception that only if you're in the beachfront with beach access, you get to have a great hotel in Tel Aviv. And people understood, you know, just like in Jerusalem, not everything around the old city although there's a lot of fantastic hotels there, are the ones that are more in demand. You know, as you grow out to neighborhoods, you're able to get closer to what people actually want, which is to really get involved with local, with local neighborhoods and the, and the locals, wherever they are buying their newspaper or buying their flowers or buying their, 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 their fruits and vegetables. And very relevant to today, of course, um, amid this COVID-19 and post-COVID. So we've just had in hospitality in the UK, we've had our super Saturday, which meant most of our restaurants and bars and some hotels have opened. What's the state of play right now in Israel? So right now in Israel, um, it's pretty much most of the big cities are out there in normal circumstances, but with the limitation and the regulations, of course, of wearing masks, social distancing, all of these new norms are now present in all of the big cities. The smaller cities, some of them are going back to lockdown, depending where. Yeah, we are, we're definitely started, Israel started with really, from an Israeli perspective, really we, we're, we're very, uh, to this adversity and everything that has to do with crises, we usually are very smart about the comeback. This time you can understand that it's so unprecedented and we are in such a situation that even us that really have a lot of experience, mostly with the geopolitical, of course, crises, it's, diff it's very difficult to take control of this coronavirus. So Israel right now is in a position where we're still without international travel, very few flights. Uh, the borders are, are, are really pretty much blocked. And that's a big deal for us because Israel, for sure, it's like an island. You gotta get on a plane, you cannot just get in a car and go for your vacation or go for business or for any other reason. So we are really right now very much, um, I would say very patient, very resilient, but also we're very anxious about the whole summer. We will definitely be very in a good situation relatively to other countries in the domestic market. But at the same time, 
we need that international tourism. We are definitely missing it and hotels cannot survive on 40, 40% or 30% only full in the weekends. But um, I, we're hopeful. Um, very, I'm very optimistic that we will get there even before the vaccine. Like you said, we're going to learn to live with it and we're going to be working on it. Do you think there'll be um, a lot of closures in, in Tel Aviv? The, the hotels, a lot of them didn't really close. They were not officially closed. They left, for example, Hilton Tel Aviv remained open. Um, many other boutique hotels remained open, a little bit more for the local market, as long as there, there was no lockdown. And lockdown, of course, doors were closed and just security and, and, and whatever minimal you could do. So it will, it's going to be a very interesting period because all of the hotel owners, at the same time that they want to open and bring in the cash, because obviously cash is king, and start to um, deal with whatever challenges are ahead in the next half a year or year. At the same time, uh, we all want to help them to mitigate costs and to really bring down those costs as soon as possible. So if you start to staff too fast and too quickly, and at the same time, you don't have enough the demand coming in, that you can even lose even more money. So the idea is to be really strategic about working with owners and hotel management um, in every type of hotel. It could be a business hotel, a resort. It could be every, anywhere, geographically speaking, anywhere in the world, not just Israel, and still be very, very careful how to do it very gradually and very carefully and very thoughtfully. And, the, and that's, I think, the name of the game right now is um, how to reopen or how to continue to be open and maintain, the, to be open in a way that you can control costs give service, deal with all of the extras of, um, say, the you know, cleanliness, which is, you know, that in itself is a big revolution, and, and have some kind of F&B offering, and, and, and then pull through and weather the storm until we have uh, better times. But I think, actually, that you cannot just weather the storm. We, we could, and I, I already see it in parts of the uh, Tel Aviv hotels and Jerusalem hotels, you can even prosper if you're a small hotel and you are really aggressive in the good sense to the domestic and local market. If you're a spa hotel, if you're a wellness hotel, you could definitely grab a lot of the share of the local domestic market because Israelis, no matter what, they just travel. They don't, I mean, if they can't get away on a plane, they will get their car, go to a lot, you know, to, and to the Red Sea, they will go up north to the mountains in the Galil. They will go to the Dead Sea, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, all of the northern coast. And they will make sure to get out. Families, kids, it doesn't matter. Um, they have to get out of the house. That's just the mentality. It's the moving around, which is probably what got us a little bit in trouble in terms of, uh, you know, people going out a little too fast and now having to hold it, hold out. Yeah, you make some really interesting points there about the uh, the consumer habits in, in Israel. I've noticed on LinkedIn, Ronit, that um, you've been really active. Um, have, have you picked up clients during this time? Yeah. So what I did is what I told my clients to do. It's the, sort of like a, an interesting setup because the first thing I told my clients, which again, most of them are hotel owners or they have development projects coming along. And some of them come from the world of restaurants and and other other industries. So I said to them, you know, first of all, you have to take the time and communicate right away. Be on the time, be online as much as you can. Have your presence there. Uh, that will help you a lot in the future by just setting the stage and being ready when things do get better. And get educated also. And uh, this is the time where people, um, we, you know, we're all talking about it in the industry and not just our industry is like this is a time where we do have a little bit of extra time and there's the silver lining in that is that you can actually research more educate yourself more and work on other projects so the other thing i said to my clients right away work on your marketing on everything you always wanted to do that you never had time database data mining digital go digital on whatever you can you know do at this point with its little cash 
you know, you don't have that much cash, but in, with all, you know, you can do a lot of things with very little budget, social networks, um, go in uh, your photography, set it up, make sense of it, uh, work on a new website if you need to, work on the technologies that you need to now, not just the technologies of contactless and touchless, but also the technologies that have to do with, you know, uh, being a little bit more sophisticated in whatever distribution systems you have. And whatever you want to eventually try to save money in commissions to all these big, you know, OTAs. So there's so much to do. So then what I did is whatever I was telling a client to do, I was doing it myself. I went online more. I wrote a lot more materials and content and resources, researching a lot, educating myself so that I would be on top of things, you know, when, when, when someone needs that, that knowledge base and so on. So that's, I think that the key is, is just the, the discipline, the patience, the flexibility, all these values are really, really coming along very strongly right now. Whatever experience you've ever had in your life, um, just try to embrace what's happening. Be optimistic. There's really not much that we can do. Not everything is in our control. Use the time uh, strategically to really place yourself you know, on top of others in the future. Those that are just sitting down and, you know, we say in, in Hebrew, there's a saying, you know, in the army, um, if you fell asleep in your, in your duty, you know, you're in trouble, forget it, you're done. So the same thing in business, instead of just like getting into a bunker and like being depressed, get out, meet people, even if it's virtually, and uh, get things done. Everything that one is preparing today will definitely help us in the future. I love that you speak so passionately and uh, everything is, is, is bang on. I think, it, you know, people that have been quiet during these times have definitely not been forgotten, but there's people that have overtaken them in many sectors. Ronnie, what's next for you? What's next for Copeland Hospitality? So a couple of things in the, in the area of, um, Everything that's happening post COVID or, 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 you know, during this crisis, which in my opinion, it is going to take a long, a long time. It's going to be a long recovery and it's going to have its ups and downs. People call it waves, but I think it's just going to be up and down. And during that time, some of the hotels are starting to come to me or some of those development projects that were supposed to be hotels are starting to come to me to develop all kinds of hybrid concepts. In other words, not just a hotel, some kind of combination um, for to be able to be inclusive of other markets. It could be the office market in a much more flexible way, not just like sharing, just classical sharing way, but even a little bit further to more private spaces and in, in the particular guest rooms or outside and in the public facilities. It could be um, areas of repurposing where you're bringing tenants that can pay rent and that way calm the situation, survive, and then maybe do other changes another year or two. So here I'm working with some really, really good projects. For example, we're working on a Tel Aviv hotel. We wanna bring in a radio station, a broadcast, a real uh, glass um, um, setup, like you would have in like an Olympics, you know, games or in sports games or whatever. And some will be uh, not 24 seven, but there will definitely be broadcasters there working on media that is related to the hotel, um, working on a lot of other areas, live sessions. So that's one thing that is, you know, if anyone wants to join Liam, you know, come go ahead. As soon as you can get on an airplane to get to Tel Aviv, come. Um, you're the perfect person. Let me put it that way. So that's one idea. The other thing we're working on a hotel for to bringing a dance studio. It's a hotel that is urban but it has we're working on a wellness concept but wellness of, of of i think today and even more so accelerated by covid but more so today in a more spiritual wellness not, less of a spa facility and those you know classic uh, massage and, and 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 very high touch points but more in the sense of rituals um rituals in the world of wellness are very easy to implement in a hotel you know even like washing your hands which is so, so important today. And it just sounds to us, you know, 
crazy how many times we have to do that. And I think this is going to stick for a long time. Mm -hmm. You can do it in such a way with design elements uh, before and after a particular session or seminar or studio or um, so on. Everything that has to do with more yoga classes, more Pilates, more movement, the movement of movement, I call it. So that's another project we're working on. It's a wellness uh, concept that will have in it a lot of rituals for men, women, families, kids, everyone. And that would also have um, a, a, situ a business kind of like a new revenue stream model of, of a dance studio, also collaborating, which is today is the times of collaborations, collaborating to bring in a lot of content, but also paying rent as a studio. And this studio would have closed maybe, you know, outside of a hotel setting, and now it can survive. There's another two projects um, which uh, are, are fantastic, and I've developed them a couple months before COVID, and during COVID very, very, um, very strongly aggressively. One is a new food and beverage concept, which uh, I would love if you, uh, you know, to, to share it. Um, anyone who wants to be in touch, Liam, I'll definitely share it with you right away. Yep. It's a concept that really, you know, opens up the kitchen for eateries rather than just, you know, your restaurant, your room service, your, your pool bar, um, your lobby bar. It's completely unconventional, very small kitchen, maybe a little bit of what you, some of your other guests have spoken about dark kitchens and delivery and such a big deal with that. But in, in my opinion, if you really bring it into the environment of a hotel, you can serve the guest in such a way that you personalize it towards them. That's my thing. Um, less on the service itself will not be so different. The takeaway, the grab and goes, the deliveries, the breakfast, not buffet eh, so much, but you know, a little bit different. But what's going to be very different in the concept that I'm developing is to try to identify the, the, what the actually guest wants. And I have a system that I'm, we will be dividing them in different groups and clusters to be able for them to say before they come to the hotels, what is it that they want uh, in terms of their food, um, it, their food, you know, whether it's glucose, you know, uh, free, whether it's sugar, less sugar, whether it's uh, meat, meatless, vegetarian, a vegan, you name it but it would be very, very structured and orderly so that, so that it could actually work and be a business. And that's what we're trying to now formulate, the implementation of it, rather than just the conceptual ideas that we came forth. And, uh, and I think everyone has to wait and see what's gonna happen with green hotels. Green, not so much in the sense of le uh, lead certification, but more in the real sense of oxygen a lot of greenery, a lot of open spaces. Again, very relevant to what we're gonna think be seeing. Uh, hotels that are a little bit farther from the major urban dense cities. There will be catering also to young. I, I've always, always believed that even those that are older wanna be young, they wanna feel young. So they, they would go to places like that. Uh, bicycle ridings, uh, all kinds of like very concrete programs, uh, spiritual team buildings. So these, these kinds of green hotels, some of the big brands have started to, to work on that. Um, I, I deal a lot with independence and, and the independents also want to be head on and come to the plate and step, step it up and say, you know what, what do I need for someone to come into the hotel and feel that fresh air, not just in what they're eating, not just in, you know, what, how people are treating them and how the room looks and the design. And of course, everything that has to do with the technical aspects of ventilation and air conditioning, but also in the actual uh, look, feel. And sometimes, you know, if you're around, I don't know if you're around, you've been ever around the place, it's a big restaurant that has a lot, a lot of plants around. You can even hear them uh, and, 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 the, and, and think about it. Just basic natural things like air, like wind, like earth, like, you know, everything that can be used that is going back to more natural things. Um, uh, using of natural wood, of pebbles, of uh, rocks, of anything that can really get us more into more, again, 
call it hospitality, spiritual, spirituality, you know, and I come from Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is uh, the capital of, uh, you know, it's, I think it's the spiritual capital of the world. Wow. So um, I think there's a little connection there. Well, you certainly have your hands full then. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and happy to really happy to support and help. This is the time to just give and share and collaborate and, um, and, and really, and, and I'm very happy um, for this conversation with you because it's exactly what we should be doing now. Yeah. What do you think is the secret to success for you personally? I think that I, um, the kind of uh, advisor or project manager or consultant that comes from the field. All of my life, all of my experience, starting at the High Regency in Cambridge, in Boston, eh, all the way you know, to, to projects again in the US and in, in Europe and in, in Israel, it's always been down in the field. You know, from reception to sales manager to VP, I was also a credit manager, and to, so I know the numbers, I did my B and MBA, and, and everything together just co comes to a place where the more you know how a hotel is gonna work now and in the future, the more you understand the operations, the limitations, there are challenges in, 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 in how much we can do with the problems that we've had before Corona uh, on staffing and getting good people into the hospitality industry. Not easy. Um, so in that sense, the background is very helpful. And I think that uh, diversity in, in the hotel arenas are very, are very good. In other words, I can be in real estate and property and investment and get the investor, get the affiliation, do the business plan feasibilities, and I can go all the way to the sales and, the, and, the, and, and everything that has to do with product, with uh, renovations, with changing things, with strategic changes, rebranding, reinventing which is, what, this is what we're doing now with ourselves. We are reinventing ourselves right now. This is what we're telling our clients to do. So in that sense, I think if you constantly uh, reinvent yourself and look for more revenue models and meet more people and embrace other countries. Today I work with Germany, Hungary, Spain, US um, and Israel. And I would love <laughs> to work with other countries in Europe, especially because of the distance. And so the more you're, 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 you're out there and you, and you do that, the more you get motivated and excited about new things because every day with what we do, every day is different. It really is. And if you just keep those four or five pillars, which are more both personal and both professional, which is take care of yourself, think yourself of wellness. A lot of people have been doing this and taking advantage of the lockdowns and home working from home to, you know, eat better, walk a lot, take a lot of walks, and, and, and take these values into the hotels and be very disciplined, get up in the morning, you know, do what you have to do, make your list, learn about new technologies, be transparent, tell people what you're doing. It's okay, you know, it's, it's fine to just tell everyone, just like I tell a hotel, whatever cleaning uh, protocols you're doing, don't keep it as a secret. Just tell as much as you can, because that's what our, our guest is, is, is looking for, to know as much as information as he can. So be informed, get educated, be transparent, use technology, and just get up in the morning and say, listen, it could be worse. We're, we're fine. We'll be okay. We will. Ronnie, this is, uh, I could listen to you all day, actually. You, you, uh, the, you. You, you speak with so much knowledge and wisdom and, um, you know, Again, you've hit the nail on the head so many times in this conversation. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. I will share your details with everyone after the show. Um, and I can't yes. wait to come to Tel Aviv and, and see some of your fantastic projects. Good luck, for, good luck for the rest of uh, the year. And we'll stay in touch. And thanks for coming on the Posh Cockney Show. My pleasure. You're the best. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.